Peace and love, family. It's your girl, Six the Goddess. And keep in mind, I'm a goddess and I'm sensitive about my shift. I hope you all are doing well. I am doing amazing. And part of the reason why I'm doing so well is because I'm feeling so alive and so healthy because I have been juicing. Allow me to introduce you to Alpha Juice Company. Alpha Juice is a Black-owned, organic, fresh, cold-pressed juice company that delivers juices right to your door. Now, if you're like me, I am not a big fan of consuming cold, raw fruits and vegetables. Not going to lie. That's my truth, but I know I still need it. So the solution is go ahead and drink it. As opposed to going through the trouble of juicing myself, Alpha Juice Company drops it off to your front door. And we're even going to save you some money, $5 off using my code 6GOD. There's so many benefits, antioxidants, removing mucus from your body. I use mine as a pre-workout before the gym. It is just endless. It's black owned. Like take my money. So anyway, I want to go ahead and get into today's video because I really want to um, kind of break down what's going on here. So I know by now you all have seen Candace Owens and Kanye West with their White Lives Matter t-shirt, which is a weak trolling attempt at best. But then it brings us to the deeper question of why do people like Candace Owens and Kanye West exist? Who gives them all this media attention? Who is putting the money behind these people and why? Okay. And it is for no reason. These are people who do not provide any solutions at all. These are people who take their money, their time, their love home to white people. So you have to ask yourself, you really don't even have a dog in this fight because according to you, if you have money and you're married to somebody white, you should be exempt from all of our problems. So you have to ask yourself, why are they so invested in speaking against a community that is not a part of their family. They marry white, marry out, but then they're always in black folks business. And when you look at someone's spouse, that tells you 90% of why they're doing what they do. Okay. Period. If you look at Candace Owens' husband, he is a good old boy. I'm talking about, he looked like Donald Trump's son. I'm talking about a saltine of saltines. All right. So Candace Owens' number one job is simply to reduce white guilt, period. The job of people like Kanye and Candace are to stop white guilt and to make white people feel comfortable. That's it. That is why whenever they do something wrong to us, they have a list of why we should not be upset. And they deliver these talking points as being black looking. Shout out to the sister Vicki Dillard for the term black looking. But black looking is where it begins and where it ends. So I'm not going to say too much else. Um, let's go ahead and get into the video. Also, before I get into the video, let me just say there are a lot of things that I do agree with with what Candace says. Let me just start by saying there a broke clock is right twice a day. Candace Owens has some talking points that I do agree with. However, her motive behind what she do is the problem that I have. I also want to go on record by saying that there are not. My goal here is not to deflect accountability from our own people. We all know our issues as a people, those of us who are in this, we are working to bring awareness, solutions, and fix our issues, okay? But the problem is all races have problems, but then when it's Black people's problems, it's like other races have the audacity to come in and try to counsel us on what our problem is. And it's the pot calling the kettle Black at, at the very least, because not y'all always trying to tell us about our problems and y'all got the worst problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at this video and I'm going to give my commentary step by step. Let's get started. Oh, the minute I see her face, uh, <laughs> like the minute I see her face, I'm like, Ugh. it's broken. You cannot use the internet today. It's not working anywhere in the world because I wore a t-shirt alongside Ye West, Kanye West, which read White Lives Matter. And God forbid, God forbid you wear a t-shirt that says White Lives Matter. We wore this for his Yeezy season nine fashion show here in Paris. And people are upset. They're very upset about that. They're going, why on earth? How could you? How dare you wear this shirt? How dare you make a mockery of the BLM movement? In addition to this, in case you missed it on Kanye West's Instagram page, he wrote this. Everyone knows that Black Lives Matter was a scam. Now it's over. You're welcome. That is the only response. You know, it's the self-righteousness for me, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not going to hold you. The self-righteousness is truly sending me because um, I just have one question and I just have one question only. So, Kanye, you're saying that your whole point in this was because Black Lives Matter is a scam. So, Kanye, your entire clothing line is a goddamn scam. OK, your entire clothing line is a scam. It is clothes that look like they are fit for homeless people on their very best day. And we are talking about your stupid Yeezy boots that you sell for seven hundred dollars and they cost you thirty dollars to make with along with about four dollars of labor. OK, so I don't even know what percent of profit that is. OK, so we're over here. Kanye West show, sold a plain white t-shirt for $120. Kanye has literally gotten rich off of selling subpar homeless looking clothing to people and has the nerve to come up and hear self-righteous talking about how, oh my God, um, <laughs> oh my God, guys, Black Lives Matter is a scam. Kanye, your entire business is a scam. The whole way you got rich is a scam. Also, Candace, is this you as well? Um, I just want to know if this is you because Candace, not you over here on this self-righteous tip to bring down Black Lives Matter. Not you who was over here promoting the Freedom Phone to save Americans from the hefty bill of iPhones and Android. Not you out here promoting the Freedom Phone. And then when you're tweeting all about it and how great it is, not you tweeting it at Twitter for iPhone. Not you doing that. So it is hilarious to me, at the very least, to have these two, <laughs> the biggest grifters. They, Candace has grifted around so much, and so has Kanye. And it's just so ironic to me that these are the people being so self-righteous, speaking about something being a scam. Is that y'all? The only thing that he has said publicly about wearing the T-shirt, and you obviously know if you're watching this where I stand on the Black Lives Matter movement. In fact, I'm doing an entire documentary to expose the fraudulent nature of that movement and the organization that stood behind it oh. and benefited billions and billions of dollars uh, because they elicited, elicited Black grief. Uh, they sold Black people. A you know, I just want to go on record by saying that there are almost a trillion dollars that are laundered every year from white big corporations and big white pharma. Candace, why is that not your focus? Why are you not focused on the trillion dollars each year that is laundered from the economy by old white men? Why are you, why is your dick so hard for BLM? I mean, screw the trillion dollars. Those nakers, they got a billion dollars. Oh no. Screw the trillion dollars, all right? I, I, Concept I, I, of their oppression. They clear. used poorer Black Americans as a marketing firm for their organization. And where did that money go? Well, certainly not to Black America. So I had this wonderful thing this morning, this wonderful experience. Why you ain't have that energy for the Red Cross when Haiti had the earthquake and the, and the Red Cross came and built three houses? Why don't you have a problem with them who wait until poor black countries are in a natural disaster that they created and then have people send money and leave people to die? Why did you not do a video on the American Red Cross? Anyway, experience, and I'll tell you why it was wonderful. I had breakfast with Ye um, at his hotel and it was wonderful because it was one of those moments where I realized how far I've come from where I was. Oh the first time that I ever came to Paris Ironically, I was having breakfast with a woman whose family I worked for, and she was so awful to me. And I'll never forget this moment because it almost ruined Paris for me. It was a, a wealthy woman who told me as we sat in her hotel, which was the George Sank Hotel, she said, Candace, a girl like you shouldn't even be here. Look how expensive the omelet is that you're eating. Do you see how expensive it is? An omelet is $35. A girl like you can't afford this hotel or you can't, you can't afford to stay here. And I remember I was so upset uh, that when I left that breakfast, I was crying because I was so angry that anybody had spoken to me like that. And fast forward, I guess more than 10 years now, and I am sitting at a hotel with having an omelet, by the way, uh, with Yay West. And we are.
And see, this is a big part of why people like this exist, because they are very thirsty for white acceptance, because I know most of us black people, we are not losing a single wink of sleep over a white person telling us where we do or we don't belong. We have overcame so much despite them constantly hating on us. It is you that finds them not accepting you something to cry about. We're not crying about that. This is all a personal vendetta. OK, listen to what she's saying. She want to prove a point. This is what it all come down to. Black, black looking people like this exist on some. I'm going to show you white people I can do just like them. No one cares, Candace. This is your personal. This is your personal villain origin story. And we do not care. Pay attention to what she says. Let's continue. We're discussing the Internet, which we just broke over this T-shirt. And I just started jotting down some things that he was saying because he was actually giving an interview uh, to another magazine. And he said, I perform for an audience of one and that's God. I love I loved that statement. So I wrote it down. He also said, quote, utopia is possible for it not who we are being led by. I'm going to say that again. Utopia is possible for it. Boy, they think they eat with these lame ass, whack ass quotes, honey. You are not eating at all. Let's not, let's just go ahead and talk about for a second what the biggest scam of taking black people's money is. Let's go ahead and talk about the fact that it's a church. Let's talk about how in 2020 black people donated. And I say donated because a donation means you give it and you don't get nothing back. Let's talk about the billions of dollars that black pay people donated to the black church back in 2020. And then when the pandemic hit, the church was looking at them talking about, we'll pray for you. OK, let's talk about the billions of dollars that Christianity takes from black folks with nothing in return. OK. And here you are. The irony when you are sitting here on your self-righteous throne is to quote God and holy quotes from the big the organization that has killed the most people caused the most divide and stolen the most money. That's what you use to quote to defend your BS. Not Continue. who we are being led by, which of course leads me to think about Black Lives Matter again. And these people who claim to be leaders and knew that what they were doing was further dividing the masses. I mean, the whole idea here via the Black Lives Matter movement was to make sure that Black people saw oppression and saw white supremacy surrounding them and convincing them that if they leaned into this narrative, that somehow their lives would be better. It wasn't. So you basically just describe Christianity once again. That's what Christianity is, convincing people they're going to burn in hell. And if you don't want to burn in hell, come over here to me and give me your money. It's the selective outrage for me. But go Mirage. Ahead. Actually, that's a, a word that Yay used during the breakfast too. It was basically a mirage, right? This idea that somehow all we needed to do was burn down our own neighborhoods. All we needed to do was have our youth wearing a George Floyd t-shirt. Um, so, you know, when they, when th this is, this sends me, okay. Because when they talk about the whole, oh, you know, you burnt down your neighborhoods, that really confuses me. And I'm going to tell you why that talking point just utterly confuses me because have y'all seen um, what white people do when they riot over sports? Okay, so white folks literally will go out here and tear up their own communities because their favorite sports team either won or lost. Okay. Um, and that is okay. Like you're not speaking on that. These white folks, I'm going to give y'all an example right here. OK, with these white people in Boston who are destroying their own communities over a sports game. Yet when we, quote unquote, destroy our communities for killing our family, that's a problem. OK, that's a problem, right? You know, I, I, all, all I want is to make this make sense. That's all I want. OK, I want nothing more than for this to make sense to me. In Philadelphia, at the Eagle Stadium, they had to build a jail inside of the stadium because they could not cart these unruly white folks off to jail fast enough for destroying the stadium and everything outside of it when they won or lost. So these white folks can get out here and tear up their own community for a goddamn ball game. But when we tear up our community for killing our children, it's a problem. Why are you not talking about that, Candace? 
I have questions, Candace. What do you call it when white folks tear up their neighborhood because of football? But that's not your job, right? All we needed to do was loot targets um, and loot these expensive stores and somehow justice would be delivered. And of course it wasn't. There is a deep irony and a sad irony when you consider that wearing a t-shirt has led such a tremor throughout the world, right? A t-shirt that says white lives matter, which should be implied, right? White lives matter, black lives matter, Asian lives matter. It should be implied. Yet people are angry and they are being vicious online because they can't believe that we have the audacity to detract from the movement, which is a lie, right? And I'm so glad she used the term detract because that is exactly what this is. What you spoke on, that dumbass t-shirt did not help anything. It did not solve anything. That is all it was, is a detraction. And it's very interesting to me when you use terms like they viciously attacked you from wearing a t-shirt that was totally unnecessary for you to put on. OK, that's what this is really about. Oh, because, Candace, I heard about how back when you was in high school, a little birdie told me that went to high school with you. They told him about that raggedy ass perm you had in your head where your hair was falling out and how all the girls didn't want to be your friend and tease you. So is that what this is really about, Candace? Is it about how when you were in school, you got treated so bad that and the black people didn't want to be your friend and didn't like you with your just for me perm that broke all your permed head off? OK, is that what this is really about? Okay, because you're over here sitting here to, uh, and and being disrespectful to your own people. And then you're like, they they're vicious towards me, ma'am. You are vicious towards everyone that looks like you. Black lives matter. If black lives matter, then some of these things that we have been talking about on this show, things I've been talking about throughout my entire political career would be getting attention. Not the T-shirt, right? Not the T-shirt, but these actual statistics that matter. And here are just a few of them. 100. You know, Candace, remember that mayor when you was in high school that was sending you all those harassing and stalking messages, all them racist messages. Now, how would you feel if I showed up to your event with a T-shirt with his face on it talking about his life mattered? OK, how would you feel about that, Candace, if we went ahead and showed up with the racist white man that was sending you all them death threats, stalking and harassment calls back in high school when you and your family went ahead and sued them and settled for thirty five thousand dollars and thought y'all ate and thought y'all came up? How would you feel if that man who disrespected you and harmed you and didn't have to pay any real consequence for it? How would you feel if we walked up in your space with a T-shirt with his face on it? Oh, and, and then proceeded to say, oh, well, what's the problem, Candace? Because didn't you bully Lizzo? Like, imagine someone coming in your face and disrespecting you. And then when you're like, what the hell? They're like, oh, you're mad about this T-shirt, but you ain't mad about the fact that uh, you borrowed $5 from someone back in seventh grade and never paid it back. It's so weird. You disrespected people. Why are you bringing all this up as to make your disrespect okay? 117,626 black children were killed by surgical abortion in the United States in 2018, right? Those are recent statistics. Just so we are clear, abortion in America has contributed to the greatest decline in black population since the first black slaves arrived. Girl, please just stop. All right. Now, y'all know my stance on abortion, okay? It, abortion is not giving to me. Um, I definitely am pro-contraception, okay? I do agree with aborting our children is wrong. However, you, once again, why are you coming in here disrespecting people and then saying, oh, well, you got abortions, so... My T-shirt should not matter. And what does it mean when you speak on black women's abortions? Because in most states, it is white women that are the ones getting more abortions than we are. Roe versus Wade was recently overturned due to so many white women aborting their babies. And on top of that, having low fertility rates and they are dying faster than they're being born. To where they had to stop abortions for white infants to be able to make it into this world. 
If you look at this chart, in most states, it is higher for the white women to get an extremely more, a higher amount of abortion than black women. So I don't get what you mean when you're like black women get abortions, white women get abortions. Again, how does that justify your disrespect? How does this justify you being a tool against your people? Can y'all see this? I want you to take a look at this. What is she talking about? If 47, let's take the first one, Arkansas. If 47% of black women got an abortion, white women are right behind us. Why are you not making a video towards them? And again, I ask you again, what on earth does that have to do with justifying your constant disrespect and downplaying of our plight as a people? Explain. You should be mad about this shirt. <laughs> Look at her. She got her notes written down. She just knows she ate. Okay. She just knows she's eating right now. Sis, it's not giving and it's not eating. You will hear people often talk about um, lynching. It's just like a new thing. They like to, they like neoliberalism. They could talk about lynching and they compare everything to lynchings. It's just like being lynched, 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 lynched. Well, for your reference, you should know that 4,467 people in the United States were victims of lynchings from 1883 to 1941. 3,265 of those people were black. And you keep talking about lynching as this horrific thing that's happened in the past, right? Oh, yeah. You know, because I love how she's downplaying the lynching. I love that she's like, you guys are so mad about this lynching thing, okay? Uh, this lynching thing that's all in the past. Ma'am, this is our grandparents. OK, you know, once again, Candace, help us understand the, the whole why are you like the lynching thing? Because you're right, Candace, because I'm sure I am sure that these people. OK, uh, y'all, we're you know what? We, we owe Candace an apology, OK, because we are sure that these people definitely accurately recorded all of their lynchings in the trees in the middle of the woods. Yeah, because we are sure that these people were so responsible as to sit and accurately keep count of every single lynching they did, because these are people with integrity and this is not a big deal. We're sorry, Candace. You know what? What were we thinking? Yeah. Yeah. OK. The very people that present you to numbers are the very people responsible for reporting them. OK, ma'am. She's like, these lynchings, like it's no big deal, girl. <laughs> and yet when you say to people today that 20 million black infants were aborted, they don't even blink an eye. They don't even bat an eyelash. No, no, less than batting an eyelash. They tell those same black people that they need to be outraged when a Planned Parenthood clinic shuts down. 20 million. When you talk about people that are killed in the millions, when you talk about uh, the Jewish Holocaust, when you talk about the Rwandan Holocaust, people are, oh my gosh, oh my, this is a horrible, of course, because it is horrible. Now you see how when she's talking about lynching, she's like, you're tripping over these lynchings. But then when she speaks about the Holocaust, she, she acknowledges, she's like, yes, it is horrible. These are the small ways where you can tell what her real agenda is. But for whatever reason, since we have convinced ourselves to genocide our own offspring, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They don't bend us. In fact, they tell you that it is your right. So think about that. 20 million black babies. And yet a T-shirt is what got attention last night in 2012. Um, I wore this T-shirt in disrespect, y'all. OK, but I don't know why you're not mad about these abortions instead. That is so weird. Would you walk into a room full of Jews with a Hitler Lives Matter T-shirt on? You absolutely would not. But you can stand in front of a predominantly black crowd with white lives matter and it's cool. And you're like, but you all get abortions. Like imagine that, that is a dangerous game where every time someone try you, that person could say, well, you that's dangerous. And that can go back and forth forever. But go off, sis. More black babies were killed by abortion in New York City than were born. Imagine that your abortion rate being higher than your live birth rate in a city. And they celebrate it. Do you remember notoriously? The governor lit up the city pink when they talked about expanding abortion rights. 
expanding the oh. black genocide light up the skyscrapers pink it is a win a win for who though is the question a win for who 79% of planned parenthood abortion facilities are located within walking distance of neighborhoods that have a higher proportion of Latina and black women. And do you know why, Candace, you're so ignorant. You are so uneducated and you are so ignorant. It's ridiculous. Okay. Do you know why they did that? Once again, going back to the horrible birth rates of white women and these fertile Hispanic and black women popping babies out. And guess who put these clinics there? Yo, people you love so much, the white folks. The white folks put these abortion clinics in the hood because their women were not producing enough babies and black women and Hispanic women were popping them out. That's the root of the problem. Let us as black women, real black women, worry about our abortion issue. That's on us. We don't need you sitting in front of these white folks and saying because we get abortions that we deserve everything else that happens to us as a whole race of people, girl. And, but that's not the only thing that's killing black America, literally. We also know obesity is killing black America. I wish, you know what we should have done? We should. You know what? I, 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 I'm really glad that she spoke on this term of doing it to ourselves. Do you all know? Do you all know? What is the main thing killing white men? Do you know what it is? Guess what it is? Suicide. Guess where white men are most likely to die? In places like Montana and Alaska, where some 50,000 of them per year are offing themselves. Guess what the number one reason why they're offing themselves? Because white women came in and started taking their jobs. Because white women came in and started taking their jobs and they couldn't make ends meet. These white men are in counseling and have crisis hotlines because as a white male where no one in this country is trying to kill you, lock you up or stop you from doing anything. These white men and the white male fragility is just so soft that they are offing themselves. But again, why are you not talking about that, Candace? I saw an interview with an ER doctor in Montana, and he said, if I have 25 people come through my ER in a night, 15 of them are attempted suicide by middle-aged white men who kill themselves, literally kill themselves. But when black folks kill to eat, we're just, we ain't shit. And then you know what happened? Oh, do y'all know how deep this rabbit hole goes? I want y'all to look up the Tamarack Grief Resort, okay? The Tamarack Grief Resort, just look that up. It is a resort for white children who fathers killed themselves to get grief counseling. Black children have their parents sat, taken away by the system in all kinds of mass incarceration. Black people are locked up six times the amount of other people. You lock these black boys' fathers up. Where the fuck is the grief counseling resort for young black boys where the system gives their fathers six times the sentence a white man committing the same crime? Please show me where. They are not giving any counseling. They are not giving any type of mental health treatment at all. Do you know why they have these grief centers for children of these fragile white men that kill themselves? Do you know why? Because the children of parents who kill themselves are three times more likely to also kill themselves. And they understand the system in that. So they provide a solution to assist the children not going down the same path. You know what they do with black men and their sons? They lock them up and then they follow their sons around because they know that their sons are also three times more likely to be incarcerated if their father is. So instead of providing them counseling, they follow them around and keep a bed warm for them. But you don't speak about that, Candace. What's wrong, Candace? Talk about black people kill each other. White folks kill themselves. Literally. Where is that video at, Candace? to put a white lives matter t-shirt on lizzo maybe we could have gotten a lot of attention about obesity and how it's actually lizzo. killing black americans obesity is the number one killer in america 
Okay. I know Black Lives Matter told you it was police shootings, right? Oh, absolutely not. I think in the year um, 2020, was it nine unarmed black men were killed by police? Nine of them. But obesity is killing people at a very high rate. She literally is lying. I, this is crazy to me. Like, you're literally lying. She, talking about nine black people. That number is not even accurate. You know you get desperate when you go to lying, girl. And black women have the highest rates of obesity. So the 56.9% of us are Honey, Obesity is a problem in general in America. Okay. We have enough black women who are trying to counsel other black women on our weight issue. Once again, we don't need you putting this in front of white folks to justify what they do to us. Once again, I'm aware of something that I did not have to wear to disrespect you, but you're fat. So you should take the disrespect. I'm going to wear this shirt and disrespect hundreds of years of pain and suffering by our ancestors. But it's okay because you fat. Make it make sense. Let's continue. Classified as obese. We shouldn't talk about that. You know why? Because it didn't have a t-shirt on it. No one wants to talk about it if you're not talking about a police officer, right? People don't want to talk about the fact that black people are slaughtering other black people. People don't want to talk about black on black crime. It doesn't matter because we're doing it to ourselves, right? Just like we're aborting our own babies. Applaud it. Applaud it. In fact, put it in the music. Put the criminality in the music and celebrate it. Give it a Grammy. Give and black you know criminality. You said that as well, Candace, because it's very interesting to me how this whole thing is sold that rap music is the problem. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's the part that is very confusing to me is this 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 hyper focus on black people kill themselves and they deserve it because the rap music Candace, why are you not speaking on companies like Sony who fund 10 billion dollars into the hip hop industry 10 billion dollars approximately into the hip hop music industry per year? So you just talking about the artists I thought you just said one plus one equals two. Don't just focus on the two. Focus on the one plus one. So you're saying that the rap lyrics is the reason for our behavior, but you're that's the two. What about the one plus one, which is the large white corporations that fund the very thing that you say you're against? And it also is confusing to me because why do we sit here and act like white people do not have disgusting lyrics? OK, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys lyrics from a heavy metal song. And I'm going to read them out loud to you, okay? A heavy metal song by a white artist. Uh, intro, looking for a well-built 18 to 30-year-old to be slaughtered, the master butcher. Today, I will meet a gentleman. He likes me so much he could eat me up. Soft parts and even hard ones are on the menu because you are what you eat and you know what it is. It's my part, my part. That's my part, my part. The dull blade, good and proper. I'm bleeding heavily and feeling sick. Although I have to fight to stay awake, I keep eating while in convulsions. <laughs> Let me make this bigger so y'all know I'm not capping. Ain't no capping my rap. That this is a real goddamn song. The bridge. It's just so well seasoned and so nicely flambéed and so lovingly served on porcelain and with the good wine and gentle candlelit candlelight. Yeah, I'll take my time. You've got to have some culture because you are what you eat. Okay, so are these heavy metal songs about cannibalism? Are these heavy metal songs about finding an 18 to 30 year old man to go ahead and eat? I mean, is that what inspired Jeffrey Dahmer? So should we blame rock and metal music for all the white kids that are being cannibals and killing their parents? Or is it just rap lyrics? So white people having a heavy metal song about eating other people is fine and finding a random person to kill and flambe and drink with wine. But black people rapping about how they had to kill someone to survive in a system designed by white supremacy is more violent. Okay. This song is called, let me, and this is the real song, you guys, okay? This song is called Men Tale, whatever that means. Men Tale, I don't know. But since we are detracting 
Candace again. So what is your point again? Because once again, Candace, we're still confused. But let's continue. Maybe at some point we'll understand. <laughs> let's just keep going, guys. We're the the Grammys so that we understand that this is ours. Sit in the cool club, right? Now we know what it means to be black. Now we know what it means to not be a traitor to your own race. Murder your own race. And if you don't do it in your womb, grab a gun. Kill the guy next to you. Applause all around the world. Per the CDC, African Americans are four times more likely to be killed by a gun than the overall population. And once again, it's not a white person that is pulling the trigger. It's another black person. We account for almost 40% of all of the homicide offenders in the United States. 40% coming from the smallest piece of the population. Now, once again, I'm going to say this one time. I'm going to say this one time only. All right. Black people do not commit more crimes than white people. Black people do not kill each other more than white people do. The difference is when white people kill, a lot of times it goes unpunished, unreported. Um, you know, I mean, and I'm going back to the Jeffrey Dahmer situation. Look how Jeffrey Dahmer was able to be a murderer all over town. And when the police would pull him over, they'd be like, have a good day, buddy. OK, so don't ever fall for this rhetoric of, oh, my God, look at how black people are killing each other so much. No. OK, we don't kill each other more than other people do. The difference is they don't talk about it because why they understand representation and they do not want to desensitize themselves to it. I'm up here in Gwinnett. There is a 17 year old white boy who was just murdered last night by other white boys. OK, I saw an article in Thailand, a, a Thai man walked into some place and killed 30 people. But you will never, ever. And other races commit crimes, dare I say, for no reason, because there's no system coming to make your life harder. They kill each other because they took away their Xbox or for life insurance money or just because they're mad. You know what I mean? So don't ever let them sell you that. All right. Black people do. Man, stop. I told y'all, while I grew up, these white kids would kick people, dough in, steal people's cars, and no one ever called the police. The men in their community would come forward and they would discipline the boys themselves. The men in our community are too busy throwing the boys under the bus saying, what's wrong with you? As opposed to handling it like white men do. That's why their boys are not all through the system. Not that their boys commit less crimes. Let's continue. We're talking about. And then even if the black boy did commit the crime we could see why why the fuck is tyler with his mommy and daddy in the suburbs kicking in people's doors but we don't talk about that though let's continue it's what seven percent of the population is black men and they're accounting for 40 percent of all of the homicides in the united states but let's not talk about that in fact let's call that racist to even acknowledge that truth to talk about the ills in our own community white men are responsible for over 80 percent of the suicides running away from their families, leaving their children with no dads. Why is that? Why is that? Why are what we, why is what we're doing more of a problem than that? If they can kill themselves, why are some we do it as a problem? They do it as cool. No one talk about that. That's racism. Let's just, let's just move on for it. To, to understand the result without ever having to talk about the problem, right? You don't have to talk oh, about the- Oh, girl, you ain't shit, period. I cannot believe you just said all that. To say, you talk about the result, but you don't talk about the problem. The audacity. You are the number one person who does not talk about the root of the issue. All you do is get your ass on the internet and talk down and be a sellout to your own people. Then have the nerve to say that it is us who does not consider the source of a problem. Okay. Okay. Equation, I'll just give you the answer. Black men are, are incarcerated, right? It says here that there are nearly five times the rate of black men in prison than white people. Oh, perfect narrative, it must be racism. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that we're the most murderous group in America. Okay, I just, I'm a, I just, one more time, because y'all, I keep telling y'all, I keep getting a little bit confused with this, okay? This entire country was founded on murder, okay? So it's ironic to me that as you sit here and you record this video, the very country that you are speaking of and from is the very country that was literally built on murder. So are these the people? So these aren't the people who are the most murderous. OK, can somebody help me? Because I'm a little bit confused. 
Candace Owens says that black men are the most murderous group of men in this country. So all of these saltines are not the most murderous. It's the ones up here that are the most murderous. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. I mean, did I miss the bus? I mean, do we live in the United States of America? I could have sworn we did. Christopher Columbus has just entered the chat. Christopher Columbus said, who is the most murderous group? Who? Christopher Columbus said, put some respect on his name, Candace. He said, don't take his title, ma'am. Has nothing to do with that. Of course, one plus one equals two. But let's focus on the two and not the one plus one. Let's focus on... Girl, not you disproving your own entire video. Girl, you just made that whole video just to disprove yourself at the very end. Girl, <laughs> boy, this is the perfect example of how someone can be book educated and university educated and still be dumb. Everything except for the fact that we also know that these individuals that are ending up in prison or these individuals that are ending up killed or these infants that are being taken out of their mother's own womb, they're all coming from broken families. Family. Oh, from broken families. Okay, so y'all know I'm from Florida. I'm gonna give y'all an example. Back in Florida, there was a, uh, a long time ago, there was a town called Colored Town uh, down south, close to Miami. Black families were flourishing. Black business was flourishing. You know what they did? If y'all in South Florida, y'all know what Highway 95 is. You know what they did? They plowed it down and built a highway over it. So not the men that you're defending have been the ones where every time we have had something successful as families and as community, they come through and they literally destroy it. Uh, the Tulsa uh, massacre has just entered the chat where I'm from in Orlando, in Ocoee. It was a black community in Ocoee called the, uh, the Ocoee ma massacre occurred where it was black farmer developing land with black families and they came in, killed them all and took their homes and land and still live it on their land to this day. Okay. So when white men kill themselves, their children get grief counseling because they understand that their child will be three times more likely to do the same. But when black men are incarcerated, we're supposed to act like it's not normal that their sons would follow the same path. Oh, but that one plus one equals two is what you don't want to hear, Candace. Because again, that ain't what you pay to do. But go ahead, sis, keep going. These have been strategically broken down in a culture that promotes, further promotes the breakdown of family that corrodes the value of women, that corrodes the value of men. But hey, that wasn't wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt. So who cares? Who cares? Who cares if 20... I am so mad that she is comparing issues like mass incarceration and abortion to a t-shirt. It's just disingenuous from the beginning. Like she's she is literally justifying mass incarceration at a rate where Black people getting locked up six times higher she is justifying that due to a t-shirt. Three million black babies are dead. Who cares if half of our black men are locked up? Who cares if black women, half of them are clinically obese? If we represent 40% of all. You know what else does it matter? It doesn't matter at all. The education statistics. Don't even pay attention to the fact that 74% of black boys in California can't pass a basic reading exam. You know why? Because we love ignorance. We should celebrate ignorance, right? Who cares that across five schools in an inner city like Baltimore, they couldn't find a single child that was proficient in reading and in writing? Who cares? Who cares that three out of four black boys in California schools cannot meet writing standards? Who cares? It's not Candace, girl, this is this is just so weak. So you know what, Candace, I'm really glad that you brought that up about the education thing. Cause let's go ahead and talk about that as well, okay? Cause I got a one plus one. I'm Candace. I'm so glad you want to do math class. Because guess what? While you talk about one plus one equals two, sus, I got a one plus one equals two as well. So do you know that black boys make up 80% of the special education population? Do you know this is nothing but a pipeline to the prison? So this is what they'll do. And she used California as an example. So I'm going to use it as well. So what they'll do is in California, they will make the cost of living so high that mom and dad have to work. So the option of homeschooling does not become an option. If you've been in California, you already know what I mean by the fact that it costs. So what they'll do is they will take these black boys and they will put them in classrooms with a white female teacher. 
It is an astounding amount of teachers who the percentage are white female. And the irony behind it is when you have a white female teacher, the number one person she's likely to be married to is number one, another teacher. Guess who the number two career choice that a, a white female teacher is most likely to be married to? A policeman. So you have a white woman that grew up with white privilege in a white neighborhood with white schools. You put her in a classroom with young black boys. She's married to a cop. She's watched all the propaganda on TV. And this is who you put in front of these boys to sit here and teach, not knowing how important a student relating to and connecting to the teacher determines their ability to be educated. We're not even going to speak on how they have scientists and psychologists who purposely word exams in a way that is not relatable and understanding towards black boys. Imagine someone giving you a test in a different language and mad because you ain't passed it. We're not going to speak on how they go out their way to have lingo in a test that purposely, that purposely will interact negatively with a black male mind. Oh, let's continue with the one plus one because black boys that have their father in their lives and showing up to their schools also have a higher chance of a better education. Oh, but you have his father doing 20 years in jail for possessing weed. Oh, that one. I'm so glad you brought that up, Candace. Let's keep talking about this one plus Not in a White Lives Matter t-shirt, so we won't talk about the fact that nearly 80% of black boys in the fourth grade failed to meet state reading standards. None of that stuff, for whatever reason, resonates. No one's ever outraged. Never I remember when I was in high school, my mom was dying of very aggressive breast cancer, and I was super angry and super stressed out. And one day, I beat up this girl, and I felt really bad about it. And they decided to suspend me from school. And I was like, you know what? I get it. You know, I shouldn't have did that. But what was very interesting to me is that in that same day, there was a white girl. I will never forget this like white girl. Her name was Shannon. And Shannon had also beat another girl up. And do you know what the administrator said? They gave her three days of in. I got 10 days of out of school suspension. Do you know that Shannon did the same thing I did, but she got a three day in school suspension? You know why? Because the administrator goes, her parents are going through a divorce and she's really going through a lot. So they didn't suspend her. We both did the same thing. Meanwhile, I was stressed, up, stressed out because my mom was dying. And they kicked me out of school for 10 days. This is an example of how black children are always treated unfairly in the school system. Let's also talk about how black boys are most likely to be sent to schools that don't even have the adequate tools and supplies and budget to even give them an education. Let's talk about how black children are two out of every three suspensions in school. But again, Candace, we talk about the two, not the one plus one. My bad. Ever trends on Twitter last night, White Lives Matter was trending on Twitter because Kanye West had the nerve. How dare you? Oh. Just read to you as white supremacy, but the T-shirt. So anyway, the rest of this is just about her being mad because she wore this disrespectful t-shirt and we didn't go for it. The point of the matter is this. Every race has their problems. What black people, we don't go to, we do, you'll never see a black person go in a room full of Indian people, Asian people, white people, and sit and to far in on what their issue as it is. We don't need white folks telling us what we need to do when they're killing themselves at the highest rate out of everybody, all right? We don't need Asian people telling us what to do when they are dying out so fast they can't even keep up and their birth rate is so low that they are on the verge of extinction themselves. We're not gonna sit and police Indian people how they reproduce so much and keep having children they can't afford to feed and how they're starving in their country and overpopulated and can barely breathe in their own land but they keep having fucking kids. We do not go to other races and tell them what they need to do. But what Candace does, and that's her job, again, being married to a white boy, being employed by them folk, her job is to take our issues and villainize us for it, to make white people more comfortable with benefiting from white supremacy and being racist and sitting back and watching as everything unfolds and they don't say anything. That's what this is all about. Candace, find you somebody else to play with. This was so weak. This made no sense. You do not wear a dumbass t-shirt like that. White lives have never been in question and never been treated as though they don't matter, okay? 
So the point of the matter is stop disrespecting people. Stop being used as a damn tool. We ain't going for it. This was weak and find you somebody else to play with. Subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'm out.